Last year, I graduated with a degree in architectural engineering, which basically means I'm way overqualified to design Minecraft houses, and that is exactly what I did. So over the past few days, I've spent pretty well close to 12 hours designing this seven by 10 home. Yeah, you heard that right. It is seven blocks wide and 10 blocks deep, not including the roof. Now, if we take a quick preview inside, well, this is why every single detail is designed to, well, I would say near perfection, but that's just my opinion. But there's a lot of thought that went into every single corner of this build. Even in the backyard, we have a little greenhouse, a little campfire, some nice greenery. And then look at that. Look how cozy this is. It's very nice. It's 10 a.m. right now. So you do get the morning sunlight going all the way through your living room. It's very, very beautiful. But here's what's going to happen. We are going to tour the outside of this house. We're going to go inside. Check that out. We're going to tour the backyard. Check out the greenhouse. And then there's a little something back there that we'll see in a little bit. So if you're ready to see my kind of ridiculously over-engineered Minecraft house, we're gonna talk about the architecture, engineering, urban planning, then keep watching. Before we get started, if you don't mind clicking the like, it just helps with the YouTube algorithm and helps me to reach more people who may also enjoy this content. But with that being said, let's check out my Minecraft laneway house. So starting off from this laneway, I mean, it is garbage day. Well, compost day. Is this a compost bin? It might be a garbage bin, I'm not sure. There's a bunch of different types of bins. Does mine have a label on it? Mine does not. What do you guys got? What do you got? Recycling, organics, more recycling. All right, that's fine. I'm just gonna, it's garbage day for me. But yeah, I wanted to make this house very, very appealing, especially from the curb. So I am using Cube Pack. I'm here on Cubed Community in the city of Everton. And yeah, we got a whole bunch of, whole bunch of plant pots, whole bunch of, look at, look at the sun. Look how pretty this is. But I wanted to make it feel very organic, very green, very, very welcoming. Even on the backside here, lots of stuff hidden. I have my secret sign hidden down there, Alpine One, October 2021. Build time, 12 hours, shaders, 10 a.m. That is my recommendation. That is what I have it set on right now. Because once we get inside, look at all that light. Look at all that light. It's going to be very, very cool. But first, let me get you acquainted with this site. So this way is facing south. So if I go up here and I put a north arrow, there you go. North is that way. So we are making the assumption that we are in the northern hemisphere, approximately where the city of Vancouver in British Columbia is, which is about the 49th parallel. That means that this sun is probably where it should be. Actually, if anything, it should be a little bit lower in the sky, but of course that depends on the time of year. In the winter, the sun is going to be lower in the sky and the summer is going to be much, much higher. And that plays in to this overhang for the windows. So when it's the summer and the sun is up where it is, even though there is a tree in the way, shh, don't mind that, that's fine. When the sun is very high in the sky, it is going to block a lot of the sunlight in the summer from getting in, which makes it so that your house will not overheat. You can also have these things called side fins, but I don't have any on this house. It also wraps around to this side on the Western facade. So if the sun were to be setting, it would set approximately right there. So you'll get some of this evening sunlight. However, in the mornings, if you let in a lot of sunlight, which is what I do with this ginormous window right here, you are going to get a lot of the morning sunlight. So it is going to heat up your space in the morning. And by the time it's about 11 in the morning, maybe noon-ish, your house is going to be quite warm and you're not going to want that excess heat. So that's why you have these overhangs so that when the sun is right here, your house will not overheat. So that is one of the lots of architectural engineering elements that you will see throughout this house. Just a little preview, sneak peek, if you will. So that is your Southern facade up here. I do have a little something, but can't show you that yet. Over here, you have the Western facade. This is the bedroom. I put a plant right outside on purpose. You'll see that once we are inside and what purpose that serves. This is the bathroom right here. And then you have a wall. This is your front entrance. And then over here, that's your living room. Sorry, I'm getting distracted. Let's go back to the Western facade. There you go. Up top, you do have another little skylight, which is very nice. And then you have a PV panel. PV stands for photovoltaic, also known as solar panels. And I have designed this in such a way. So, I mean, okay, you got to use your imagination here a little bit, but let's pretend that this is connected to a battery system, which the battery system is in this lot, but that's a little bit of a secret we're gonna save for the end. Over here, we have the Northern facade. So this is rarely going to see sunlight. So what I have done is I've added these windows up top here, and this is more for your ambient light. One consideration is that you do have another backyard right beside it. So you may have kids that come out here and play, and maybe you don't like kids and you don't wanna see them ever. So I've added a bunch of plants along the windows. And up top, we do have Another window looking in there. Down here, we have a, I don't know what you call this, electrical something, something. It's got a lock on it. 
I feel like that's important. And down here we have my little sign, Alpine One, that's me. Hello. October 2024, build time is 12 hours, shaders 10 a.m. That is my recommendation. That is what they are at right now. That is the northern facade. Going over to the eastern facade. So this gets sunlight in the morning, which we can see right now. We have this really, really beautiful window. Very beautiful. I tried to go for something almost modernist where you have the windows kind of wrapping around the doorway here. And you can't open and close that, but we're going to go check that out in a minute. And you have a nice campfire back here. I didn't put any plants right beside it because, you know, I didn't want them to catch on fire. I figured that was important. And then back here, you have a little bit of a greenhouse, a little, uh, little composter, and then a little butterfly. I'm growing some carrots. I thought it was pretty cool. Back here, we... Uh, don't worry about that. But coming back around front, we do have the driveway. It is four wide. My vehicles are typically three wide, but... I don't know, I feel like the person that lives here drives a motorcycle, so I don't think they need all of that extra room. Back here, we do have a pathway that connects all the way to that street way down there. That's just in case there is a fire and you do need an extra escape route, you can go this way. Very important. So, that is the outside. Now it's time to check out the interior. So this is the front entrance. It's very nice, in my opinion, my humble opinion, talking about my own build. You come in your front door, Close that door, there you go. And then you're immediately greeted by this open space that's still a little bit divided by these trap doors. You have a place to hang your coat and then you can place your shoes right here. Don't get my floor dirty, take your shoes off. Don't track mud through my house. You know how much time this takes to clean? Anyway, here's a picture of a bird. Hello bird, it needs a name. Can you guys name the bird? Thank you. But yeah, as soon as you come in, little bit of a divider. I felt that it was important to separate the space because you have this beautiful kitchen and then you have this beautiful living room but I originally had it open when I was designing this floor plan and I felt like it needed a bit of separation but I didn't want to add like a, a full-on wall that you can't see through so I felt this was a good option now one of the things you're probably wondering is hey where do you eat because you know you gotta eat I like eating I don't know about you guys but I like food so the idea was that you can take this plant pot you can kind of throw it back in that corner you can take this chair you can put it right there and you can eat right here. And then if you have other chairs, which I don't know, there's no storage. That's one of the faults of this place. There is zero storage. But if you have another chair, then you can put it on the other side and even a third chair right here. And then you can eat. Very nice. This kitchen, I love this kitchen. This is cube pack. I love cube pack. It is my favorite. You have a fridge. Very nice. You have a stove, which is just a furnace. You have a range hood over top. You have a little bit of a Spot for a plant up there, or you could put something else up there. It's really up to you. A little bit of counter space. And then over here, you have a sink with a beautiful gold faucet. Very nice. And in the back there, you do have that chain link fence. I think eventually the neighbors will probably change it to a wood fence, which would be nice. Uh, would be nice. I'm okay. And there's a beautiful tree up there. Look at that. I love that tree. It's the best. Over here, you do have, you know, a little bit of a window. I put a bunch of plants there just for some privacy. And it's kind of a common theme where there's lots of trees, lots of greenery. So it, even though there are a lot of windows, it does feel quite private. Down here, if you are doing dishes or cooking stuff, you probably don't want to be standing on the hardwood all the time. So yeah, a little spot for your feet. Not too bad. Over here is the living room where you have one chair and a little bit of a modern couch. I know it's made of tile, but let's pretend that it's just a pattern and it's actually comfortable. This is a light that I felt was important to have because it brings the room from feeling very, very tall and you know, very, very open to a little bit more intimate when you're down here, right? This is only, oh, hello. That's not what I want. Yeah, so see this? I can't, okay, it doesn't let me jump, but uh, it brings it down to about two and a half blocks above there. So it feels a lot more intimate. And then these are end rods up here. So if you do change it to night, then it is going to emit light. It's very nice, I love it. The back door is back here. You have another hanging basket, very pretty, very nice. And you can keep an eye on the, uh, the campfire from inside. So you don't have to go too far, which I felt was very important. You do have a clay pot. You got lots of them around here. I have a, it's, you guys saw a bunch of them over there. There you go. There's one hiding right there. But I love these clay pots. They're very, very nice. That is the main living space. If we look back this way, we have three more areas to explore. First of all is the bathroom hiding back in this corner. Second is the bedroom. And then third is a loft way up there. And yes, there is even more skylights because I love my skylights. So let's check out this bathroom. First of all, this tile is beautiful. I love this texture so much. You have a toilet. 
which is a model in CubePack. And then you have a very similar sync to this one over here, except the faucets is a slightly different design. And what I like about CubePack is that it allows you to design very small spaces quite nicely. It does actually look quite good. I really do like it. Oh yeah, got a little towel here. Then you have a bath mat for when you get out of the shower. And in the shower here, don't mind that there's leaves poking through. I do have a lot of greenery on the other side of this wall. Your next question is why? Well, most of the walls in this house are actually trap doors. So they're very, very thin. Look at this, see? You saw it here where these windows, very thin. This wall, very, very thin. This is something you can pretty much exclusively only do in cute back. Now over here, oh, sorry, I gotta finish this first. Yep, okay, so in the shower, you have a little bit of a shelf. These are just stairs. This is one of the few places in the house that has full blocks as the walls on the exterior. You do have an end rod as the shower head. It does emit light as well, which is kind of cool, especially at night. But yeah, it's it's uh, quite cozy. Little shelf, nice tile as well. I really love these textures, but uh, that is the bathroom. So if we go out here, look at the light coming in. Wow, I love that so much. But yeah, this is the bedroom. Very simple, very minimalist. These are just the top halves of doors. And then I just cut the bottoms off with world edits. This is snow right here. These are corals, I believe, but yeah, you can make some pretty cool beds and furniture like that. You have some nightstands here. And then on the side of the bed, you have a little carpet because when you get out of bed in the morning, you don't want to have cold feet. I don't want to have cold feet. There you go. Now your feet are nice and warm. Over here, we have a floor to ceiling window, which does still provide quite a bit of privacy. I thought it was a nice addition to this area. Now I didn't put it in the middle or on this end because if you're laying in bed, See that angle? All you're seeing is leaves. Nobody can see in, you're fine. And then this window up here, again, you have that hanging basket. So if that hanging basket was not there, it might feel a little bit empty, but since you have greenery right outside, it does feel quite cozy and comforting. Look at all those trees out there. So pretty. But yeah, that is the bedroom. Oh yeah, you have a crown molding up on top here too. I thought that was quite cool. Lots of little spaces in here. Oh, and this door, you're probably wondering why is this doorway so wide compared to this one. This is a sliding door. It is not actually functional, but hey, use your imagination. Now, if we head back out here, it's time to check out this way up here. Look at the skylight. I love this so much. So if we head up the ladder, this is my secret loft, even though it's not much of a secret, but a uh, nice view of downstairs there up here. I do have a little bit of a chair. I thought that was pretty cool. Thank you, Cube Pack. Very nice. Nice place to sit and relax. You have a window out here. Not too bad. Now up here, you're not really looking for a lot of privacy. I mean, I don't think a whole lot of people are looking up here anyway, especially since, you know, you live in a laneway house in a lane, but I have a little desk up here, lots of windows, little skylight here, little record on the wall. And yeah, some nice windows over here. You can see the tops of those nice buildings right there. But yeah, look at all the sunlight coming in. It's super nice. And a really great part, is when the sun does set, you're going to be able to see it all through this window. It's very, very nice. Also, if you were to cut down that tree, you would get a very nice view of the Everton skyline. Okay, we're restarting, all right. Okay, my Google Home says it has a notification. All right, everything is happening at once, apparently. We'll be right back. Okay, we are back, there we go. All right, problem solved. So I think that was pretty much it for the interior. Here you go, take one last look before we head outside through this door into the backyard. And then as soon as you step outside, you are immediately surrounded by greenery. It's very, very cozy, lots of plants, lots of good stuff around here. I really love this backyard. I'm really proud of it. If you do have your friends over, you can bring them over for a campfire and then you can third wheel by sitting here and be reminded that you are going to die alone. Anyway, here's a greenhouse. I do have some carrots growing. It's uh, waving a little bit. I guess there's a bit of a draft from that door being open, but you have a composter and a little butterfly here. Now, you guys ready for this? If you go around the side of the greenhouse, back here, oh, what's this? This is weird. Huh, what's down here? Well, let's check it out. Oh, hello, how are you today? Yeah, that's right. It's a bit of a almost vault down here, which is pretty cool. So you can keep all your valuable artwork, all of this really cool stuff. This is actually the plant that's sitting right beside me. This is my plant. He doesn't, he doesn't have a name. Can you guys name my plant maybe? Don't name it Bob. Over here on the other side, there is a, another section. And this is where the engineering really comes into play. So this is a lot of the stuff that I did with my undergraduate degree. So these are 
rainwater collection tanks. So if we hop right back outside on the roof, it is going to rain. It is going to be collected by the eaves troughs. And then it is going to go down into the earth and then going to be stored in these containers. And what you can do is you can filter and purify it and you can use it as water for either drinking, you can shower, you can wash your dishes, but that is only if you filter the water and make it potable. You also need to do some UV treatment. That is also very important. However, if you just collect your rainwater here and it is in here, it has not been processed. It's not back in your house. This is gray water. The water is not actually gray, although it might be, I guess, but you can use it to flush toilets because that water does not have to be drinkable. Over here, this is a heater. I know it's very in depth. It's a whole two blocks. Crazy, I know. This is some geothermal things. Well, I don't know the name of it, but you can have geothermal things. Do you guys like geothermal things? I like geothermal things. If we go in this door, oh, what's this? And we open this trap door, go right here and close it. Ha ha ha, we're going on a bit of an adventure. Down here, this is underneath the driveway. We have these lines. So you see how they kind of loop back and forth? What these are doing, this is gathering heat from the earth. It is sending it back to those batteries. And that is how you can heat or cool your house. Loops all the way back. And if we head back to where we came, it connects into the battery. So by having geothermal, that is going to allow you to be potentially self-sufficient in your home's heating and maybe cooling. So that, my friends, is the engineering behind this laneway house, this self-sustaining laneway house. And if we come back out here, we'll take another good look at this house. If you found the engineering behind this house interesting, first of all, I'm gonna ask you to subscribe because I do a lot of stuff like this. But I've also created an hour-long info session slash course on what it's like to go through an undergraduate degree in architectural engineering. What is it? How is it different than architecture? Because it is not the same. What can you potentially do in your career? And what can you expect to learn if you do take an undergraduate degree that is somewhat similar to mine? Or if you don't care at all and you just wanna learn about the engineering behind buildings, it's very good for that as well. I drew a whole bunch of diagrams and walked through a bunch of examples as well. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, click like. If you really like it, click subscribe. But my name's Matt. You're watching Alpine.